What's going on guys? Welcome back to another computer tutorial brought to you by the CIS guy. So in this video I really wanted to get back to the main focus of my channel which is computers and information technology. I've been posting a lot of gameplay as of late but I really wanted to get back to the main focus which is computers so I thought what better way to do so than by introducing you guys and uh, showing you how you can customize your Windows 7 or 8 operating system using a few programs that unfortunately are not free they are they either come in a bundled edition which I believe is $49.99 which I'll leave, leave a link to in the description below but if you're heavily interested in purchasing them after this video you can also buy them uh, in single products instead of just buying the whole bundle you can buy the exact product that you want I'm gonna have a link to all those uh, in the description below so go ahead and check them there and in the video you're gonna see a brief overview of what I use to customize my desktop as well as uh, some other programs that other users have found helpful from research that I have. So to begin, if you look at the overall layout of my uh, desktop, you'll notice that it probably looks a lot different from yours. And that is because of the programs that I have installed. These programs, uh, they customize the uh, interface of your taskbar down here. I'll, I'll get into more specifics on what each program does in a minute. They also give you system monitoring uh, gadgets that allow you to monitor just like usage of your CPU, RAM, how much hard drive disk space you have left in addition to your network speeds. And they also give you some pretty cool gadgets like this clock right here that I'll show you. And uh, I'll go more in depth about that in a little bit because there's actually a really cool feature that you probably won't notice right off the bat about this clock. So let me get started with the first program that I have to show you by doing this. So as you guys see, I double clicked on my desktop and the uh, the blue windows that you guys see here disappeared. Now what these blue windows are, they're actually called fences. And they are uh, rectangular windows that you draw out according to how many uh, applications or files or whatever you want to put in there. You draw it out and uh, this is really good for people who maybe have a cluttered desktop and they don't want to get rid of the, uh, the stuff that they have on their desktop. Essentially, you're going to be able to resize these. As you can see, I can make it a single row. But if I scroll through, you're going to be able to see all these applications. So as I stated before, you got a ton of applications or files on your desktop. You throw it into one of these fences and uh, you resize it to where it shows only one row. But you can scroll through that whole box. So this is really a good space saver. For maybe power users who have a, uh, a lot of files that they save on a daily basis. I find myself using it all the time. As you can see, I have my, uh, my fences separated into three different classifications. Programs, which is obviously where I store my programs. Files for files and folders for folders. So, again, not to sound redundant, but if you're a power user and you have a lot of stuff on your desktop that's really getting in the way of, you know, maybe you have a hard time finding it or a certain file that you're trying to access, this is really going to help you out. And I highly suggest downloading it if you uh, are willing to spend the money for it. Now, I'm not condoning this in any way. You can find a free version. I'm not going to exactly tell you how, but uh, if, you, if you want a free full version, you're going to have to do some searching yourself. But they also have a 30-day trial, which is what I'm using for right now until I decide to purchase it. But yeah, you can get a free 30-day trial for the Fences program. Again, the link for that is going to be in the description below. Before I stop talking about that, these fences, uh, they're totally customizable as soon as it decides to load here. So I could show the labels. I can change the transparency, the color intensity, adjust the uh, font type and uh, font size as well as the color. So it's a fully customizable experience. Very cool and very neat. Highly suggest downloading it. It's one of my most uh, favorite programs and applications that I use. So next, as you can see, the overall layout for uh, my Windows 7 operating system, it's got like this blue tech look to it. All of my windows have this blue border. It really makes it stand out and pop out. That is because of a program called Windows Blinds. Again, this is not a free program. It costs, I believe, $9.99, which is the same price for all the other programs you're going to see here. But essentially, this gives you different customizations and configurations for your Windows 7 uh, theme. So right now, I have a theme that was downloaded by a... Uh, it was created by a, a user, 
So this wasn't, it did not come pre-installed with the program. All the other ones that you've seen here came pre-installed with the program. And as you see, if you scroll down, you can download more from a site called Win Customize. I actually got the one that I am using right now called Aster for free. And it was created by a guy named Lightstar. So props to you, Lightstar. You made an awesome theme. And just like Fences is customizable, so are, is uh, so is the um, Windows 7 theme that you choose, or Windows 7 or 8 theme that you choose. You can change the style of it, the color, transparency, and fonts, much like the um, Fences program that I had showed you. You can also add a texture. However, I would advise against doing this because if you were to add a, te a texture that's not really a solid color, the text in the window is going to really be uh, disoriented and you're not going to be able to read it legibly. So I tend to s stay away from using anything that's not a solid color under texture. Like this right here, or this gradient is probably something that you'd want to go with as opposed to going with like these blue tiles right here, or this, uh, this paint splatter. It's really going to make the text on your screen hard to read. So I'd, I'd advise going against or and putting that on as a feature. You can also change your background, and this, it just sort of, it suits up your Windows 7 operating system. Windows 7, I keep saying Windows 7, it's not only for Windows 7, it's for Windows 8, but I'm using it on Windows 7, but it really makes it stand out, and you know, if you have friends that come over, and uh, you know, they're going to look at it and be like, oh dude, your uh, operating system's so cool, how'd you get it to do that, and obviously I go ahead and show them, so it's really just something... It's a, it's a refreshing take on the Windows 7 operating system. I've been using Windows 7 for probably about three or four years now. Don't exactly quote me on that, but it gets boring to look at after a while. I was a really big fan of the arrow feature that they implemented, but it really wasn't all that great because it didn't have that much customization options for it. But again, another neat program that you can use to customize the Windows 7 uh, operating system experience. So next... As you can see up here, if you haven't seen it already, kind of referred to this earlier, I got this Mac OS X dock looking thing. It's actually called StarDock. It was made by uh, the same corporation that made Fences and Windows Blinds. And pretty much what StarDock did is they made a, uh, a dock for the Windows operating system. I'm a huge fan of the uh, Mac OS X dock as well as the Mac operating system as a whole. And I'm really happy that there was something implemented for uh, like that for Windows. So just as you can cost customize, customize the, uh, the various settings that the other two programs, or I'm sorry, just like you can customize the other two programs that I showed you, you can guarantee that you're going to be able to customize the dock as well so as you can see the current theme that's the uh, I guess the background or the dock that you see behind the icons you can choose themes for it I have crystal XP but if I wanted to change it to like a brushed metallic steel look I can definitely do that I'm gonna go back to crystal XP though because I think it really looks nice and complements my desktop and you can also change your uh, font shadow color outline color all that good stuff change the behavior of the way the icons move so it's very customizable and that's one thing that I really like about it on Mac OS X you can't really get into the nitty-gritty of uh, customization of your dock on there unless you use like third-party programs I'm not even sure if that even allows you to do that but you can totally do it on here and it's really cool being able to just have that feature it's sort of like having a mini taskbar only it's up at the top of your screen essentially. You can also have it on the bottom. I have it at the top because I don't really see a reason to have two of the same things essentially down at the bottom. I think it just looks better at the top. Next program I'm going to show you guys is Rain Meter. And what Rain Meter is, it's a uh, suite for various gadgets that you can put on your desktop. So this right here, this, this is my network up and down speed monitor. I have various monitors in this little box, a CPU monitor, RAM monitor, uh, hard drive disk space, and power monitor, as well as another disk, uh, disk space manager, and I also have a clock. Now, this, this program is pretty unique. Um, you pretty much find user-created skins and then you download them to the program as a whole, and it's, it's just various gadgets that really make your desktop stand out is just like I said for the other programs that I had mentioned 
So I have an analog clock. I have a sweet pack called Arcs. Ar I'm sorry, that's actually not a sweet pack. Uh, su I, keep, I don't know how you say that word. Suit or sweet, whatever. Arcs is actually this down here. I'm going to get into that as soon as I get done explaining uh, the uh, rain meter overview right here. You can choose different layouts. Of course, you can adjust settings. But if I were to, I, I have all these pre downloaded. If I were to click under the uh, theme pack Illustrator and go to disk any, you can see that the disk down there disappeared. So clearly I deactivated that, that uh, gadget, but I go ahead and re click it to reactivate it. You can add buttons for Google. I'm sorry, you can actually add a search box for Google. Maybe I'll keep that on here. That could be helpful. So you could search Google directly from your desktop. So that could be helpful for some users. I probably won't use it all that much, but if I ever need a quick reference to something and I'm on the desktop, I'll definitely be sure to go ahead and give that a go. But yeah, this is good for someone who maybe wants to just keep track of how much CPU is being used when you're performing a certain task or something like that. I find myself using it a lot, but uh, that's just me. Really, all of this stuff depends on you know what kind of user you are. I consider myself to be a power user, so if I'm downloading something, I obviously want to know um, just how my network is being affected by what I'm downloading. And this this gadget right here, the uh, network up and down speed monitor, is great for that. And really, so are all the other gadgets that you see. Really enjoy using it. Now, this right here is actually a really cool gadget. It's a clock, but it actually took me a little figure out just what all of these like sort of progress bars, as I like to call them, are around it. If you click it, you go to Variants, or I'm sorry, if you go to Arcs and then Legend, click the Legend, little picture is going to pop up. Usually it gets open with Windows Photo Viewer. Where'd it go? Why is it? Okay, there we go. Alright, so these progress bars actually represent different things that your desktop already has on them. So, or I'm sorry, not that your desktop already has, but it, it has a few features that your desktop won't have, rather. So if you can, if you take the time to actually study just what these uh, white blocks and this like this bar right here, I don't know exactly what you would call it, but if you take the time to actually compare the legend to the actual gadget itself, you'll see that you know you can monitor your hard drive disk space by just taking a look at that. I mean, you probably have to guesstimate because it doesn't really give an exact percentage. I don't really find myself using the progress bars around the clock as much as I do using the clock. In fact, I, I just have that gadget there because it looks cool. You can always just take a look down here at the uh, time on the taskbar down here. But, um, or I'm sorry, system tray rather. But yeah, it's it's just something cool to have on your desktop. Nothing really that flash. I mean, it is flashy in a way, but it's nothing that every user needs. It's just something I like to have because when my friends come over they're like what in the hell is that thing and why does it have all those rings around it? And it's always cool to explain to them. Lastly, and this is the most basic thing you can do to soup up your operating system, have a sweet wallpaper to accommodate all the gadgets that you have. Or even if you don't want to have gadgets, just have a sweet wallpaper. As you guys can see, I have my wallpaper set to change every 30 minutes. I have a uh, 1080p Asus 24 or Asus 24-inch monitor, and uh, I only put up 1080p resolution wallpapers. And it's just if I, I feel that my wallpapers accommodate all of the gadgets that I have open, and it just makes it look super cool. When you you don't want to have a boring wallpaper and all these awesome gadgets open. Yeah, I have mine set to change every 30 seconds. You don't have to do the same as me, but if you want a great resource for uh, various HD wallpapers, in addition to non-HD wallpapers, I highly recommend using a website called Wallpapers Wide. It's one of the best uh, wallpaper sites I've found so far. Highly recommend that. I'll also leave a description for that in the uh, a description, a link for that in the description below. That's gonna wrap up this video. This is actually a re-upload of a video I did a while back. Um, the audio in the previous video uh, of the same nature that I recorded was really low and I was getting a lot of feedback saying that uh, viewers that were watching the video couldn't make out and understand what I was saying so I'm actually using a different program to re record my voice and I'm using Fraps just to record the uh, desktop as a whole 
So I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave it in the comment section below or uh, even feel free to private message me. I'm open to all that. Again, if you guys need any help or uh, tips, suggestions, or maybe just what you think I should, uh, or what, you, what I would suggest to you guys for your desktop, I would um, be open to any of that. Just a little bit of a warning before I go ahead and end here. I'm actually really happy I didn't forget to mention this. These programs are going to be really process oriented. And what that means is that for all these programs that you guys are seeing on my uh, desktop right now, it's going to be taking up a lot of background processes. And what that means is that your processor, you're going to typically want to have a processor that you know can handle constantly running background applications and gadgets like the ones you see on my desktop. So if you don't really have a computer that has high end specs, like I'm running an i5 3570K. And that's pretty decent. I plan on overclocking that, so it's going to be a beast. But if if you have something that's like like a Core 2 Duo or like a Pentium processor, I would probably stay away from using these uh, gadgets and applications. And also, if you don't have a lot of RAM, because these some of these are memory intensive, they're going to take up a lot of your uh, physical memory. You're not going to want to use some of these applications if you have a computer that probably or um, if you have a computer that has low-end specs I would stay away from using some of these programs you could probably get away with using maybe one or two but you gotta remember and take into consideration that they're constantly gonna be running if you have them on your desktop like the Windows 7 um uh, or I'm sorry the Windows blinds program that's going to completely change your entire operating system interface so that program I probably wouldn't stress too much about because that's not really an application that's going to be running in the background so much. In fact, I don't really believe it'll be running in the back. Yeah, it's not going to be running in the background at all. It's just something that's going to change your theme. Whereas, a program like Rain Meter is going to be constantly monitoring and uh, doing all that good stuff. So, if you don't have a, a decent processor and a uh, significant amount of RAM, I would tend to avoid using some of these programs. So. Heed my warning, and if you do actually have a uh, low-end uh, computer or whatever you'd like to call it, and you find that you're able to use some of these programs, please let me know. I, I'd really be interested in hearing just how many of you are able to run these while maybe not having the specs like mine. So again, no, I'm sounding redundant. Leave some feedback. Tell me what you think. Ask any questions. We will see you guys in the next tutorial video. Not quite sure what that's going to be. Probably going to do some re-uploads because this video that I'm uploading now was a re-upload of a video I did before. As I mentioned, audio quality was bad. And I also have a few other videos that I'm going to need to re-upload due to audio quality issues. So stay on the lookout for those. Hope you enjoyed. We will see you later. Peace.